The ring that goes at the head end of the chamber has three connection points. The next ring is at face level. It has three points on one side and four on the other. And the ring that goes at the foot end of the chamber has four connection points. Notice that this ring also has a top and a bottom. The two wider points go at the top, not the bottom. If you see an odd angle on the top or bottom rails of the frame, you need to turn the foot ring to the correct position and proceed with the assembly. Because the chamber can be set up for entry from either side, you can have the top rail in one of two positions, either on the right or on the left. An extra rail bar is included in the kit. Don't put both rails on top, as that will make it very difficult to get in and out of the chamber. Place the top bar opposite the side where you will enter. As you can see, it is much easier to enter on the side without the bar. And, while getting in and out, do not lean on the rail for support. It might bend. Use it only for balance. Now, let's get the frame inside the chamber. By putting the frame inside the chamber, disassembled, and waiting until the chamber is inflated to assemble it, it will be much easier to install. To do this, go inside the chamber and have someone hand you the frame pieces. Now, turn on the compressor and zipper and buckle them in place. Once the chamber has gone to one PSI, let the person know that they can start to assemble the frame. If you can't close the pin connectors on the last few pieces, don't worry. As long as the poles are in place, it's fine. Remember the orientation of the rings and poles so you can put the frame together on the inside the same way you did on the outside. Once the frame is assembled, deflate and exit the chamber. Now put the mattress inside. That's it. The installation is complete. Now let's just check on a few things. Go inside the chamber, get on the mattress, and reinflate the chamber. This time inflation will happen much faster as the frame is holding the chamber in an open position. Once it starts to take shape, look to make sure that the zippers go straight up and down the length of the chamber. There should not be any angle in the zippers to the right or left. You should also look to see if there are any folds in the zipper as it inflates. If so, Stretch out the inner bag so that any folds appear at the top and bottom, not along the zipper length. Finally, try to align the inner and outer windows. These adjustments can only be fixed when the chamber is partially inflated. If you wait until the chamber is mostly inflated, there will be too much tension and the inner bag won't move. If you try to make adjustments when the chamber isn't inflated at all, the adjustments won't stay in place. Now let's take a look at getting in and out of the chamber and its general use. If you're putting someone else into the chamber, have them take off their shoes. Then they can climb in and lie down. Remind them not to use the chamber frame for support. They can use it for balance as they get in, but if they use it for support, it will eventually break. Remember to check that the internal air inlet valve is in the open position and that the internal air outlet valve and external outlet valve are closed. Close the zippers, lay down the flaps, close the buckles, check the buckles, and turn on the compressor. Let your client know that while the chamber is inflating, they will probably need to clear their ears. This can be done in several ways you can perform the Valsalva maneuver. While pinching the nostrils and holding the mouth closed, try to blow air out. It's a good idea to do this at least every 30 seconds while the pressure is going up so you can stay comfortable. Yawning and swallowing can also be useful. You only need to do this once the chamber starts to take shape. If a person is unable to clear their sinuses and ears at the speed that the chamber is inflating, they can open the internal air outlet valve. When their sinuses and ears are clear, they can close this valve and continue pumping up the pressure. 
You can also do this for them by opening the external air outlet valve. But since it's their ears and sinuses, they are better suited to know how much pressure relief they need. A person should never experience pain in the chamber. If they do, then decrease the pressure immediately until the pain is gone. Because of the nature of the sinuses, it is easier to clear them when the pressure differential is small. If you wait to clear your ears and sinuses and the difference is great, you may not be able to and should lower the pressure until you can. It is also possible for one ear to clear and the other to remain closed. For most people, clearing their sinuses becomes easier over time. If the person inside wants to talk to you and you can't hear them, simply turn off the compressor for a second, but don't forget to turn the compressor back on. When they are ready to get out, turn off the compressor and open up the external air outlet valve here. Although it has a sound muffler on it, you might wrap your hand around it in the beginning to make it even quieter. Once the pressure is down to 1 psi, you can disconnect the air inlet hose. The chamber deflates more slowly at lower pressures, so disconnecting the air inlet hose at 1 psi will maintain a stable deflation rate. Typically, you want to decrease the pressure by about 1 psi per minute. However, if you need to get a person out quickly, take off the hose here and pull up on the blow-off valves here and here. This will decompress the chamber very quickly. This maneuver can also be executed by the person inside. Pushing up with a finger against the blow-off valve will release air quickly. This should be done only if circumstances demand it, as it may be hard on the sinuses of the person inside. Rapid decompression can also cause a momentary fog to appear inside the chamber. Decompression fog is harmless and nothing to be concerned about. Once the pressure gauge reads about one quarter PSI, you can open the buckles like this, then open the zipper. Move the flap nearest you out of the way, reach in with your hand to help the person out, and you're done. To use the chamber by yourself, prepare the hoses and valves as discussed earlier. Unlike when you put another person into the chamber, solo operation requires the internal zipper to be open and the external zipper closed. One option is to close the bottom buckle from outside the chamber. This is a matter of personal preference. Now, turn the compressor on and climb in. While lying down, first grab the two flaps and rotate them inward, and hold them out of the way with your knees. If you try to sit up, you won't be able to close the buckles. Now, grab the tan fabric below the buckles, not the buckles themselves, align them and pull them closed. There are a total of six buckles. If you've already done the bottom buckle on the outside, you have five more to close on the inside. Now press on each buckle to make sure that they are really closed. Now put the flaps in place over the zipper. It doesn't matter which one goes on top, but remember they shouldn't cross over each other. Now if you can, put your feet up on the inner bag to get a little tension on the zipper and pull it closed. Once the chamber becomes rigid, you should be able to see where the straps and buckles press against the bag. If one or more buckles were not properly attached, they will not be pressing against the bag. Immediately deflate the bag and close the open buckles. Operation of a chamber with even a single buckle open can cause the chamber to become damaged. In a few minutes, the chamber will fully inflate. Remember to clear your sinuses. In a few more minutes, put your fingers over the relief valves. You should feel some gentle suction. You're now at full pressure. When your session is done, and it might last from 40 minutes to an hour, turn the air inlet off here.